Hello guys, in this video we'll discuss and implement serverless Rust with Vercel functions. First of all, let's talk about Vercel. If you have been working with cloud platforms like AWS, Azure, GCP, Vercel is similar, a cloud platform designed to simplify building, deploying and scaling web applications and static websites. Now since we know what is Vercel, let's talk about serverless computing. So serverless computing is a cloud computing execution model where us as developers build and run applications without managing the underlying servers. Like we just hit deploy and our server is up and running. We don't care about where it is running, like in terms of which physical bare metal machine. We don't provision it. We don't manage that or maintain that server. We just write our code and our run our code. Now to help us with serverless computing in cloud platforms, functions play a major role. For Vercel, it's Vercel functions. For AWS, it's AWS Lambda, which we have already covered for Rust. A video should be popping somewhere on right top. If you want to learn how can you run your Rust code in AWS Lambda, just click it, watch it. Here we'll learn about Vercel functions. So Vercel functions allows you to run server-side code without managing a server. And now since we have a good overview of what we'll be discussing and building in this video, Without further ado, let's dive into it and let's begin. And as we start, there's a link to my Discord in description. We are building a community, so make sure you join it. First of all, head to your favorite browser and search for Vercel.com. I'll also drop the link in the description. And if you are new to Vercel, just press sign up. If you already have an account, just press login. So I'll just press sign up. And here we can just select the plan type. So I'll just select as for personal projects. And then we can name something. So let's say Jack. And then we can connect using our Git provider like GitHub, GitLab and Bitbucket or continue with our email to create our account, which is pretty straightforward. Once you are successfully logged in into Vercel, the dashboard should look something like this, depending on when you're watching this video and how many projects you have. Now, there are tons of options that you can explore like integrations, activity, domains, usage, monitoring, observability and so on. But we'll limit that interaction for this video. Now we'll move back to our terminal and let's uh, install Vercel CLI and to install CLI we'll be using yarn as the package manager I'll drop the link in the description if you don't have yarn installed in your machine you can also use npm pnpm but I'll be using yarn global add Vercel and once we have Vercel installed on our machine you can just do Vercel login and here we have different options to log in. We can log in with GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, email, single sign on or cancel. So let's log in with GitHub. So you will be given a link, a redirect link to your browser and there you can just log in with your GitHub or just with email and the CLI would also be uh, logged in. Now let's get into the code and build our own first Rust Vercel function and deploy it. So just move to cargo terminal file. Here we'll add a few dependencies. We need Tokyo for async programming, Sarday JSON for responding with JSON, and Vercel runtime to help us build Vercel functions. So just make sure to add these dependencies. Now the versions might be different depending on when you are watching this video, but this is literally all that we need, these three dependencies. Once we have our Vercel function, we'll move back to our project explorer. Now Vercel functions require your project structure, be it any language, to be in a particular way, the skeleton to look like a particular style. So we have API directory inside we have demo RS. Now demo RS would be a single Vercel function. Similarly, if you have multiple, you can keep on adding and whatever the hierarchy of path under this API will look like, that's the same path that you have to traverse to reach your endpoint. Like let's say slash API slash users and then you have like all the users uh, functions then that's how you can access those functions as well and we won't care about src slash man rs today so let it be as it is and then versal json where we'll add the config in a bit but before move to cargo terminal file and here we have to add binary and name as let's say demo and then path as api slash demo rs now let's move to demo rs to add our first parcel function. So right here we'll just do pub async handler 
and request request from Marcel runtime and then we have result as response again from Marcel runtime body from Marcel runtime or error at two from Marcel runtime so right here and then uh, we can you know access anything from the body that we want as you guys can see method uri version headers extension you know body but let's for now just return a response saying response builder and status as status as 200 okay let's say so code as okay and header so header we can set as content content type and we do as application json and then we have body so in the body we can add json um, survey and right here we can just say uh message as hello from my first varsal function description as let's say uh i am a rust pro anything that you want to add and this just looks like it works like you know the apis that we build with eggs yeah metrics app right you know you can pretty much do anything so to string to string and to and to so that's pretty much all that we have since we are not using the request so let's uh not use it and we have our response similarly let's add a main so async admin main and result as unit or error and right here we'll just say run so run is again from Vercel and run handler and await let's have a quick overview of what did we do we have our ourselves function we get the request we can literally get anything from the request just like how we have our axiom actix web or a uh, rocket server uh, and then we can send the response status code header body so this is how it looks like and we have our first ourselves function ready now we'll move to ourselves json file and here we'll add functions and then the path api slash and we can add star star if any path or any base path that we add and then star dot rs now runtime and this value search for varsal rust and npm registry and scroll down here as you can see the latest one is 4.0.8 so we'll be using this so right here we'll just say varsal rust 4.0.8 that's all that we need to add in this json file and now let's quit now we have everything that we need to build and deploy our first varsal function so first of all we'll build and run locally before deploying so let's simply do cargo build release and bin as demo and then quite okay we encounter an error so let's try to fix this so the mistake that we did is we forget to add tokyo man here so let's quickly add it tokyo man right and then let's quit and let's build so the build is successful now one last thing before we serve our varsal function would be to ignore the target 
uh, build artifact tree so right here we'll just add a varsal ignore file which is we'll just do nano dot varsal ignore that would be in your project and right here we'll just do target and let's save this and then we'll just do varsal dev okay so there you go our application is served on 3000 so let's check this so in our browser we'll just do local post 3000 api demo and there you go description and message same as the one that we had in our code now let's go ahead and deploy our parcel function now we'll move to our terminal and here we don't have to configure anything any machine anything just have to do ourselves that's all okay so here you go it gives us a link where it's building on production so let's copy this link and let's wait for a few seconds meanwhile you can go to the link you were given in the terminal uh, and then just paste it and here you can also check for the build status so there you go as you can see status still building and so let's wait for it, the build to succeed and once the build is succeeded it will automatically route to your response so if i hit again there you go as you can see description and the response that we have now and in our deployment overview as you can see it succeeded and it says uh, ready so let's visit and let's add at the end just a api slash demo and there you go we get our response now there are tons of other command like varsal logs where you can just paste the link and check the logs so you can you know debug or troubleshoot your applications as well but that's it for this video guys uh we'll be using varsals very heavily in upcoming projects because let's say the applications where you have a front end on react or uh, next.js and then your back end is just you know bunch of rust uh varsal functions varsal would be very helpful for us so i'll catch you guys in another video with another interesting topic until then bye bye